compromise who people see that we are. So Jesus knew this. And so Jesus, and and as I was thinking about this topic of building a bigger table, I was thinking about what Jesus was talking about at the end of the conversation that he was having with his students, but also everybody else at dinner. And at dinner, he was sharing these words. I talked about this last week. Hospitality is when someone leaves your home feeling better about themselves than better, than not better about you. I like that. Hospitality is when someone leaves your home feeling better about themselves. Hospitality is about serving, not performing, about creating space and not taking the stage, being with and not showing off. So Jesus was talking about setting the table, and he did it among everybody around him, not just his students, not just the religious people, but anybody who was on the peripheral. And this is what he shared. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for soil nor for, manure, for the manure pile. They throw it away. Let everyone with ears to hear listen. So Jesus was speaking or trying to compel the people around him to do life differently. And he brings in this object, this idea, this everyday kind of item that he, everybody would understand and know about. And so they would understand salt in being this way. So salt had a purpose. Salt, even in those days, had a purpose. Salt was used in a couple different ways. Salt was used for grain offerings. Now, you're saying, why, why use it in a grain offering? Because salt was used to remind the people of Israel that God's covenant would be and always be forever. So saw it would represent the covenant of God, that covenant that God would say to his people, no matter what happens within your life, no matter how faithful you may be, no matter how loyal you may be within my life, no matter where you go, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on within your lives, I will always remain by your side. So salt was used to represent God's covenant. And so they would remember God's covenant in their offerings to God, and they would sprinkle salt on them, not to make them taste better, but to represent or remind them that God's loyalty would last forever. Salt would also be used to preserve. So they don't have ice. They didn't have ice back then. They didn't have freezers back then. They didn't have ice trays back then. They didn't have ice makers back then. It was funny, we got a new fridge at home, and one of the things that I went to for the first couple weeks was I was going to take my cup and I slammed it against the door every time I wanted ice. Well, we don't have an ice maker on the front. We got to get the ice out of the bin underneath on the it, you know, from that little container where the um, ice maker makes it and piles it up inside. And so it was funny to me, I, out of habit, I went to the ice maker that wasn't there anymore. So they didn't have ice back then. If you've ever been to a um, third world country, a developing country, they don't have ice either. So, you're, you know, your water's always warm. They didn't have ice back then. So what do they do? You got to take the fish to market, what do you do? You pack it with salt. You pack it with salt to keep it. You pack it with salt so that it stays. You pack it with salt so that it will preserve what you need to preserve to keep it from spoiling or decaying. They also use salt for gardening. That's where this idea of salt of the earth comes from. Salt was used as a fertilizer. Salt was used to enhance the soil to make the product, whatever the product was, better. So when you hear the words, well, that person is the salt of the earth, 
that means that this, they are enhancing your life. Because salt in the earth, or like it says, it's neither fit for soil nor the manure pile. It enhanced. It made it better. It, it enabled the, um, whatever you were growing to grow better than it did before. And as you know, salt is a flavor. It enhances the flavor of the food. You know, whether that's my favorite, corn on the cob, I add a little salt, right? A little popcorn, right? You eat a little, put a little salt in your popcorn, it enhances the flavor, it brings the flavor out. Um, you know, whether or not you put a little bit of put a little uh, salt, uh, a little pinch of salt here, a little pinch of salt there, to add to your roast to make the, the flavor of the roast come out even better. But salt is there to enhance whatever needs to be enhanced. So salt was used in to represent God's covenant, that God would always be present. Salt was used to preserve, when uh, to keep things from spoiling, your fish, your meat, whatever it may be. And salt was used to enhance make whatever you were doing in the ground more productive. Because salt or sodium chloride, and please, please, please forgive me, I am not a chemist. I am not, I'm not good at science. I never was. But from what I understand, salt, this chemical sodium chloride, is a very sturdy chemical. In fact, it's unbreakable. And the only way to make it ineffective, sodium chloride, the only way to make it ineffective is when you mix it with something else that is not good. So if it became defiled or garbage was a part of the sodium chloride, it would no longer be effective. And the funny thing about sodium chloride, you can't have one without the other, so you need both, because when you have both together, it makes it unbreakable. So Jesus said salt is good. I think he was referring to us. I think that when he was talking to those around the table about building a bigger table and including everyone to be a part of that table. They included this last concluding thought in that conversation to remind them that no matter what, we have an opportunity as followers to enhance someone else's life with grace. Now imagine for a moment, imagine for a moment what life would be like if we built a bigger table and we included everyone around us in that table, around that table. Imagine what they would experience, that grace and that love that they, everybody so desperately wants and needs. If you have a conversation with someone, talk to people around you. Talk to those who are broken. Talk to those who are struggling. Talk to those who are struggling in their relationships with other people. Talk to people who are struggling in their relationships with one another. Talk to anybody within your life who's going through a difficult time, and you'll, you will hear one of two things. Either they're struggling with this grace because they don't believe a whole lot about themselves. Talk to people about those moments within their lives that they feel overwhelmed and insecure or are fearful about what's ahead or fearful that they don't count for a whole lot or they don't believe that they could be a, a, a amount to anything. Have conversations with people. Initiate those conversations and then spend time listening to them and you will hear them say the same thing over and over and over again. That they struggle with this idea of grace. 
that someone greater than themselves can love them right where they are. And the reason why is because they don't love themselves a whole lot. And so when Jesus was saying, you know that grace thing? I need you to be salt. I need you to enhance the lives of other people around you. Be a positive, loving, gracious impact within their lives because so many people out there are broken and in need of hope and healing. I imagine there's probably a bunch of people in here too that feel the same way. Salt enhances. Salt reminds those around you that you have this relationship with God. It's in how you live life. It's how you respond. It's how you react. And I'm not saying that you have this pie-in-the-sky kind of hope. No, I'm talking about when you're real, about what you're struggling with within your lives. I'm talking about when those moments that when you are squeezed by your circumstances, who you are and your character really come out. And that character that is good and right and shows others around you your relationship with God. That's why I talk about, at the beginning, about praying. Praying is an ongoing conversation with God. I don't know about you, but I don't really mince words with God. I kind of tell God what's going on. I share with God what's happening within my life. I share with God about the stuff that I have to deal with day to day. So when I'm squeezed, God is the one who comes out. It doesn't always work well. It doesn't always happen that way. But at least... I know that I'm striving for that within my life. So when salt is good, he's saying that we need to be salt. We're preserving. We're enhancing. We're showing those around me that same grace that God has given to us so freely. Now, all of us do it differently. We all have different gifts and abilities. We all have different personalities and passions. We don't don't all do it the same way. We do it according to how God has created us and equipped us with what we need for this journey that we're on. So some of us are teachers. Some of us are encouragers. Some of us serve. Some of us lead. Some of us um, us are behind the you know, behind-the-scenes kind of people. Some of us have the ability to communicate. Some of us have the ability to, to have this faith that trust in God and who God is. Some of us have the ability to pray. Some of us have the ability to intercede for others, whether that's being compassionate, empathetic, or loving. But we all do it According to who God is within our lives and how God has created us. And so that's the key, isn't it? To be salt is according to our character. And if our character has its foundation in God and who God is within our lives, and if there's a particular area of our lives that we're struggling with, that may be because God is not the God of that particular area of our lives. I wonder what that looks like. I wonder what that looks like in all of our lives. I wonder what that, how that appears within our lives. That if we have a particular struggle within our lives, maybe it's because God is not the God in that particular area. And if that particular area is a struggle for you, maybe it's because we don't trust God with that particular area of our lives and we believe that we can do it on our own. You see, that enhances 
or takes away how we do life, but more than that, how we do life with other people. Because ultimately, I mean, isn't this life meant to be lived with others? <laughs> ultimately, I mean, isn't that how we're supposed to do life? We've been wired and created to do life with other people, and so ultimately, what do you want to be, and how do you want to be with other people? I know for me, I want to be a gracious, loving presence. I know I want to enhance their lives and not take away. Remember, hospitality and grace are the glue. And whether we be, choose to be salt or not, we can enhance the people around us or we can take away. And when we take away, that means there's something else going on inside of our lives that is breaking down who we are. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? Here's what I believe. We can all be restored. Somebody said to me this morning, can I get a mulligan? I'm like, yeah, you can have a mulligan. I don't... If you're a golfer, you know what a mulligan is, right? A mulligan is a second chance or a third chance, <laughs> depending on how lousy your golf swing is, like mine. Every hole would be a mulligan for me. I think he asked this question not because he wants to defeat us, but I think Jesus asked this question because he knew how important it was to be in relationship with him because he's the one that restores us. And he's the one that restores us through the cross and resurrection that gives us life. See, there's always an opportunity. There's always another chance. There's always another opportunity for a second chance. That's what grace is all about. Unconditional, undeserved, and relentless. We always get it. It's day to day. Sometimes it's hour to hour we get it, and we get it to have it again and again and again. As long as we trust that that's what we need within our lives. Let's pray. And so God, restore us to be who you need us to be. Restore us. For, remind us of your forgiveness and your grace. That, God, no matter what has happened within our lives, God, you still love us. No matter what has gone on in our lives, you still love us. No matter what path we choose, you still love us. No matter what we have done and the consequences of that we have, commit, you know, that we have in our lives, you still love us and you still want to utilize us and you still want us to be sought and you still want us to live a life that enhances other people especially when we're building a bigger table to include all people. Because you love all people. No matter where we've been, no matter what's happened, you love all people. And so God, this morning as we leave here, en enable us to be the light in a world gone crazy and mad in a world that is broken and filled with pain. And so God, we pray this in your son's name. Amen. You can stand with me and we'll sing this final chorus together. Um, Spirit of the living God.
presence of your love and your grace and your mercy to enhance people's lives to make a difference in this world. And we pray this, God, in your son's name. Amen.